Hello, everyone. This is Whitney Will from Starheart Astrology, and this is the astrology of April 2022. So this is also a change. Normally, I have done the astrology of Aries season. So I would have done from the time that the sun entered the sign of Aries to the time that it left. Switching over, we're going to try it out. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so this is the astrology of April. April is such a unique month and in some ways is like represents this kind of perfect story arc because the day before April, depending on your time zone, on April 1st, there is a new moon. So we start at the very beginning of the lunar cycle, right? We start the month and the first day after a new moon. So we're in a fresh month, but we're also in a fresh lunar month in it. Normally they don't line up so perfectly, but this month they do. So we have that, which means that we will have a full moon that occurs halfway through the month. So we, we trace that lunar month progression to a full moon that happens on April 16th, and then it waxes back down. And then the final day of the month, we have a new moon, but it's eclipsed. So we have a solar eclipse. So the beginning of the month changes the storyline from what we've been experiencing. The end of the month changes. We're in a different book, right? We are at the end of book one of, um, of whatever we've been working on. There's um, significant shifts that happen during eclipse season. Um, and so in some ways, right, we're in the final month before eclipse season, we're leading up to it, but this is a very unique month because we have been in Saturn land for maybe the last five months, maybe the last six months, right? We've just had this kind of extended Capricorn Aquarius dealing with Saturn, harshness, scarcity, hard work, discipline, things not being easy. April's different. We're in Aries season. We've been here for a week, but it really changes after this new moon because this new moon sets things into motion. So we've got this new moon on March 31st or April 1st, depending on your time zone, in Aries, conjunct Chiron, conjunct Mercury. There's this kind of Congress of these thinking, teaching, learning, integrating parts of the archetypal sky, right? We have the sun, our sense of purpose, our organizing principle, meeting up with Chiron, the teacher, the healer, the wound, meeting up with Mercury, the learner, the communicator, the ideas, the way that we're going to turn things over and mix them up, right? Mercury is the alchemist, right? We are making medicine in the sign of Aries with this new moon. And that medicine is unique to each of us because it's Aries. Do what feels good in the moment. That is your medicine. Learn about it. Take whatever you learn about yourself from doing that. That is your medicine. What you think you need is what you need, even if it hurts you. If it hurts you, that doesn't mean you got it wrong necessarily, because that's all information about yourself. It's all information about how to heal yourself, about how to integrate your unique journey, right? Obviously, I think that we can make mis mistakes on some level, but right, when we're going through life, how you integrate those how your story unfolds is who you are. It's not a report card. It's not some like moralistic test. I think it's much more an artistic expression of how creatively did you engage with the circumstances? Did you use all of your resources? If you lose, if you lost your faith, what did you find in the darkness? How long did you spend down there? 
What do you know at an experiential level because of that? And then we emerge into April. I think of <laughs> the Cancer New Moon as the moon's birthday. And the Aries New Moon is the sun's birthday. So this feels like the sun's birthday. The sun is exalted in Aries. We have this return to purpose. Ah, yes, this is what I was doing. This is where I was going. We hear fragments of a story that we remember. Right? Now I'm thinking of Chaucer. April. Folks going on pilgrimages. We remember where we were going. We remember the faith that we had in the story, in the journey. Um, yeah, so that's really the story of the beginning of April is this Aries new moon, the sun conjoins Chiron, right? Chiron isn't necessarily the wound. Chiron is the medicine, right? What medicine do you need for your journey? What supplies do you need? What knowledge do you need? Let's check in. Let's integrate that. Mercury conjoins the sun on April 2nd. This also marks the halfway point in between Mercury retrogrades. So, wow, that was fast. Right? So this is kind of the astrological middle between the Aquarius Capricorn retrograde that we experienced and then the Gemini Taurus retrograde to come. Um, Mercury is moving very, very fast. At this point, the fastest part of their cycle, Mercury is, um, yeah, will be in Taurus within the first 10 days. So conjoins the sun, right? You can get the message and you can transmit the message with Mercury right there. Now on April 4th, we have Saturn conjoining Mars, sorry, Mars conjoining Saturn. Mars does the conjoining because Mars moves faster. Um, so, right, it's Mars that's making that approach to Saturn. Um, and so we have the two malefics coming together in the sky. The last time they met in the sign of Aquarius, we had lockdown, we had social distancing. So we'll just keep an eye, right? Those things being lifted, what's happening? What restrictions are happening? Um, because they tend to make a little bit of mischief, right? When they come together, they're not solving things necessarily. Um, and so that can happen personally, that can happen collectively. Not a huge deal. Although last time it was, I don't know, we'll see. Um, if you're in a Mars year, or a Saturn year, it might affect you more. If you have Aquarius more prominently placed in your chart, might affect you more. The next day, everything changes. Everything changes. Venus leaves Saturn signs for the first time in six months, five months. She spent four months in Capricorn, over a month in Aquarius. She enters Pisces, the sign of her exaltation on Tuesday, April 5th. And who does she find there but the gracious hosts of Jupiter and also Neptune? And from here, we dream of peace. We dream of fantastical things. Our eyes soften. We're staring through beyond. We are not thinking we are dreaming. It might not be real, but does it have to be? You only get in trouble if you're trying to, if you believe it wholeheartedly, but right? We believe it with the sensibility of pilgrims following some faith to a holy city inside of ourselves based on our inner knowing about our own fate, which we will come to have a meeting with during eclipse season, it's the time where you can tap into your fate for some reason. It's there, right? 
we're getting softened. And you don't always have to get softened through getting, you know, right? We're not always taking like a mallet and tenderizing you, right? Sometimes you get softened by being safe and being able to relax boundaries by being able to not hold things so tightly, not be so protective. Can get into trouble, but so what? That's part of the experience as well, right? You, we have to follow the beautiful into our lives. So the moon waxes from there. The next big thing that we run into happens on Sunday the 10th with Mercury entering Taurus, right? And the planets entering Taurus are having a different kind of experience because they're entering Taurus and Venus is in the sign of her exaltation while they are in Taurus. So Mercury entering Taurus is going to be a lot more empowered to do, to communicate the Taurus things that need to happen because Venus is in such a powerful position. Mercury in Taurus is like, okay, hold the phone, let's slow down. We put a lot of things into motion while I was in Aries. We're gonna bring the focus right down to wherever Taurus is patiently putting things in order in your chart. On the 12th, we have one of the like headlines of 2022. Jupiter conjunct Neptune starts new cycles for artistic expression and creativity, right? New dreams taking form, new dreams coming into the collective there. Hopefully some softening, we'll see. Dangerous conspiracy theories, right? The delusion of Neptune, the hopefulness of Jupiter, the porousness of Pisces, our desire for comfort and belonging really take us far afield, but I kind of think we all should. <laughs> um, I think it's a supportive factor that the moon is in Virgo while this happens. So the moon is in a little bit like of a fact checking mode. So that feels like a good balance, a good balance point. On April 14th, Mars enters Pisces. So now Mars is cooling off in Pisces, except for that Mars can become a spiritual warrior in Pisces. And so, right, when we've just been given the vision or the dream of Jupiter conjunct Neptune, and now we have Mars there, right, we have all the energy to do that, which is wonderful if you have been revitalized create, creatively. Can be a little bit, you know, we'll see it play out in the news. Um, with some of the trickier the trickier bits. Then on the 16th, we have a full moon in Libra. It feels kind of uncomplicated. I don't know. There's not, you know, I mean, it's in a loose square to Pluto, so that intensifies it, but we've been dealing with these hard aspects to Pluto, right? We're familiar with the Plutonic. It's just kind of a checking in on that, right? And I always think of the full moon in Libra as the moment where we check in with our partners, you know, when we're getting carried away into something, right? It is that remembering. I think that full moons are like, you're going this direction and then you remember <laughs> the balance, right? There's the dynamic, there's the shift, there's the pivot point of the month. Like, okay. And now come home. Um, so we have that Libra full moon. That will be the last uneclipsed lunation for a month. Um, so, right. We don't do magic, we don't do ritual stuff on eclipses because eclipses are potent beasts. Um, and so, yeah, so that's the last one to kind of use in your normal full moon, let go of those stuff, um, rituals if you're doing that. The very next day we have Mercury conjoining Uranus. And as they conjoin, 
they are also in sextile to Venus and the sextile is Venus's aspect. So we've got some Venusian things happening. We've got these insight, this change of plans, this sudden change of heart, but it bends towards the Venusian. It bends towards comfort, towards taking care of the body, towards reconciliation, right? It feels like delightfully surprising. We'll see. Um, then on the 19th, the sun moves into Taurus. So now we have the sun also being ruled by an exalted Venus. A very nice, right? Putting things to right in Taurus. Um, and that brings us into Taurus season, which will be eclipse season. We're building up to it. Um, the sun and Taurus, yeah, takes a breather from the push of Aries, right? Wants things to find their place again. By the 23rd, by Saturday, the 23rd, we have Mercury conjoining the North Node. And when planets conjoin the North Node, they become very, very themselves. <laughs> and so Mercury and Taurus right, can get very heated in terms of digging in its heels and being very stubborn about opinions or thoughts or not wanting to change the plans, right, that, but if everyone's like that, right, it's going to be exciting. So we've got that, you know, the stickiness of that aspect is further emphasized by the next day. Mercury square Saturn, which is really pushing that hard edge, holding the line, right, how much are we committed to our own opinions, to our own beliefs about things? Are we going to stick and hold or are we going to compromise them, right? So that one can be a little bit crunchy. Um, on the 27th, we have Venus conjoining Neptune, which is, right? I don't know. People talk about it being divine love. I think it can get carried away. I think Venus conjoining Neptune can be as dangerous as Venus conjoining Pluto. Um, but a beautiful experience, notwithstanding. Um, then on April 29th, we have Pluto station retrogrades in Capricorn. And Mercury heads into Gemini. So the Pluto stationing retrograde, not a huge deal. Pluto spends 44% of its time retrograde. So that's where we are. Um, <laughs> Mercury goes into Gemini, which will be significant. Mercury um, rules Gemini. So there we are. We're a little bit more chatty, but Mercury is also going to retrograde. So let me double check. Mercury enters the shadow of the retrograde earlier that week. So Mercury enters the shadow of its retrograde on April 26th. So then we're moving into Mercury retrograde land. And these Mercury retrogrades that coincide with the, well, the last one coincided with Venus's retrograde. This one is going to be about eclipse season. So it's like Mercury has to reconsider things after Venus's retrograde. This one will be Mercury reconsidering what the plan is, what we're doing, after eclipse season, during eclipse season. Um, it will station retrograde in the middle of eclipse season. And then, so we've got that Pluto making that backward shift. Um, Mercury moving into its own sign. And then on the 30th, we have perhaps the most gorgeous transit of the year, Venus conjoining Jupiter at the degree of her exaltation or pretty close to it. Um, the two benefics in the sky, right? Providing that counterbalance to that earlier alignment that we had on April 4th of Mars and Saturn, the two malefics conjoining in Saturn's sign. So this is gorgeous. There can be too much of a good thing, right? Their can, indulgence is not always a, a good thing. Um, you know, so we can be, we should just be wary of that because it is eclipse season and this eclipse happens simultaneously. So we have a solar new moon eclipse in the sign of Taurus on the North Node, 
ushering us into a six month period of developing the Taurus area of our charts of being very committed to that space of the renewal of that space. And it is being blessed in the most beautiful way possible by Venus, the ruler of Taurus conjoining the greater benefic Jupiter in the sign of Venus's exaltation and Jupiter's rulership. We've got two very empowered benefics together in the sky blessing this eclipse, but it's an eclipse. So, right? Eclipses are like fairy tales where there are wisher, wishes, right? You make the wish based on what you think you want. You're not sure what you're going to get. And the story of how that plays out will be told in the astrology of May. So I will see you all then. Thanks for watching.